We've done quite a bit of work with prognostic factors in CLL and looking at predictive markers for time to first treatment, predictive markers for how patients do with treatment, predictive markers for remission, duration of remission, and predictive and prognostic factors for overall survival. Um, and it, it is a complicated area. It's changing. It's changing because of the treatments that we have, the new treatments that we have um, that have become available over the last five years. Um, the, generally, the high-risk prognostic factors that we've identified with chemoimmunotherapy, the one main one that remains still a high-risk feature with the new uh, treatments is this presence of 17P deletion or deletion of the TP53 gene. Many of the patients who have Im who are missing uh, TP53 by virtue of having a 17P deletion, those patients also have mutation in the gene TP53 the other on, on the other allele. And so they're a double knockout of the TP53 gene in the leukemia cells. And that renders them refractory or resistant to treatment with chemoimmunotherapy. So 17P deletion is a very high risk feature in CLL, particularly in chemoimmunotherapy treatments because those patients do not respond uh, to, to, to treatment, or if they do get a response, it's very transient. And they get all the toxicities associated with chemoimmunotherapy. So we avoid chemoimmunotherapy for patients with a 17P deletion or mutation in TP53. Most of the assessment for prognostic factors includes FISH, which will give you information about 17P deletion. What is, hasn't routinely been used in the community has been sequencing of TP53, or the, the gene uh, T, TP53. Um, and so I think that's a, an important topic, and it's important for people to understand that there are two tests. There's the FISH test, and there's sequencing for TP53, and that both of them are important, and we should be checking both of those for our patients, particularly if we're thinking about chemoimmunotherapy as an option. The 17P, as I mentioned, has a high risk association with, associated with it for s patients getting chemoimmunotherapy. It's also a higher risk feature for patients getting the small molecule inhibitors. Um, for example, ibrutinib. We know for relapsed patients who receive ibrutinib, there is shorter progression-free survival for patients who have a 17P deletion and also patients who have a complex karyotype. So although they do exceptionally well compared to what we used to be able to do with chemotherapy if they get ibrutinib, they're still at, at a higher risk. The median progression-free survival for relapsed patients with 17P receiving ibrutinib therapy, it's about 32 months. With chemoimmunotherapy, it's much shorter. Um, but I think that uh, illustrates an important feature, and that is that we have to have an understanding and knowledge of that particular feature, not only to choose the treatment by avoiding chemo, chemoimmunotherapy, but also to have an understanding that they may have a shorter progression-free survival if they get the small molecule inhibitors, uh, for example, ibrutinib. So among the prognostic factors that we have, we've talked about over many years, 17P deletion and mutated TP53 is still a very important one. Uh, across treatments, it is prognostic. Um, it is prognostic across across treatment types.